Welcome to our Intermediate Accounting class. For those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Jason Porter, and for the past 12 years, I've been an accounting professor teaching this very class. I love Intermediate Accounting, the debits, the credits, the journal entries, the financial statements, and all the different pieces that make accounting work. And that's what we get to talk about as we go through our Intermediate Accounting series, are those basics that make accounting work. Now, like we discussed last time, we're not going to try to tackle this as just a bunch of separate discussion points. Instead, we're going to break it down into a very specific framework. And you can see that framework right here. We're going to start by talking about the accounting cycle. Then we're going to talk about the balance sheet and the assets that a business owns and the way that they pay for those assets. Then we'll talk about the income statement. We'll talk about the more advanced calculations that are part of calculating income from operations. And then we'll talk about some other gains and losses, calculating taxes, and then getting our earnings per share. Finally, we'll talk about the last two financial statements. We'll talk about changes to retained earnings using the statement of retained earnings. And then to wrap everything up, we'll talk about the statement of cash flows. And that will wrap up our whole intermediate accounting series. We're going to start, though, right down here at the bottom, talking about the accounting cycle. Now, you've already talked about this in your introductory accounting class, but it's always a good idea to review and get back up to speed with these basics since they really do form the foundation for everything else that we do in accounting. So we're going to start our discussion by breaking the accounting cycle down into two pieces, actual accounting basics and then the financial statements. And under accounting basics, we're going to start with a discussion of GAAP. And that's what these next few segments will be all about. So with that said, our very first topic for this discussion is going to be on the basics of financial accounting and how we get those standards. Now, why do we care about this? Well, we care for a couple of different reasons. Okay, For accountants, we care because this is us, right? I mean, we understand um, the basics of financial accounting, at least most of us do if we want to be accountants. But we have to understand where it comes from because we're going to be part of that process, whether we're a standard setter or whether we're giving input to a standard setter, which a lot of accountants do as new rules come out, then you know we have to know that this is the process that they use and what theories they're using and, and how it's, it's created. We also need to know how to find the rules when we're in unique situations. I mean, you know, think of a brand new company selling a brand new item or a brand new service that's never been done before. And uh, you gotta be able to search the rules to find the correct procedures. Also, as accountants, we end up explaining this stuff to those who are not accountants quite a bit. So you have to understand it just so you can do those explanations. Now, for those of you who are not accountants, you still need to understand these basics because a lot of the comments and the suggestions and the thoughts that FASB and the other standard setters get come from non-accountants, people that either they like the current rule or they want something different or they don't like the current module because it's going to hurt their business. So even non-accountants get involved in saying whether they like or dislike a particular proposed set of rules. Or, you've got a rule, we want you to change it. So even non-accountants are involved in the standard setting process. In addition, you need to understand why GAAP isn't always straightforward. I mean, there's a lot of things involved in uh, reporting for a business, and, and you really do need to understand why sometimes the, the numbers or the processes are a little well, I was going to say confusing, but that's not the right word. Why they're a little more challenging. Uh, and it's because we're trying to make it comparable over a, a variety of industries. Okay, And finally, of course, you want to be able to understand the components of the financial system so that you can analyze your competitors, you can an analyze the companies you want to invest in. You've got to understand the basics and the basic concepts so that you'll understand them. Okay. Finally, the last thing we'll talk about in this particular segment is the expectations gap. We'll talk about it later, but it's something that all business leaders, accountants, non-accountants, need to know so that we don't have such weird expectations. Okay? So that's why our discussion of this part of, of uh, the course is so important. Okay? Now, with that said, let's go ahead and talk about financial accounting. Now, there's some formal stuff about financial accounting and where it fits in. But I actually think it's easier, rather than going through all these details that you can see up here, it's actually easier if I draw you a picture. So I'm going to try. We'll see if PowerPoint's going to cooperate tonight and let me do it. Okay? You really can think about financial accounting as two pieces. The biggest piece, what most people think about, is what we call bookkeeping. And you can imagine bookkeeping as a huge warehouse. Okay. The bookkeeping warehouse keeps track of all the different financial elements 
of a business. Everything that happens in a business gets recorded in a journal entry and all of that information goes into the accounting system okay, as part of a bookkeeping journal entry. So you can imagine okay, bookkeepers, part of our financial group, bringing a bunch of transactions into this warehouse and all of this information is stored in this great big warehouse, our bookkeeping warehouse. Now the next thing we do once we have all this information in there is we have to organize it and let different people see what's going on. So we create windows and the process of creating windows is the diff are the different aspects of the accounting profession, not the bookkeepers that do the basics, but the true accountants that really know what they're doing. So one group, the group we're most concerned with, creates a window about here. Okay? And we call them the financial statements. And you've all seen them and looked at them. But we put it about in the middle. We don't want it so high that you can see everything we're doing in our business. Because we don't want to give competitors that kind of edge. But we don't want it too low because we don't want to look like we're having a bad year or things aren't going well. So we put it about in the middle. Enough information for investors to make a good decision, but not so much that it messes up our competitive advantage. And this is the information that goes to our investors, okay, to our debt holders. We'll put him in a little monopoly hat here. And of course, regulators get the financial statements as well. So here's our regulator's office building. Uh, so we the SEC. And I should label this, we'll make this our banker, our debt holder. Okay? So they all get the financial statements. That's one of the windows. Now, that's the window we're most concerned with in our discussion, but just to put it in context, okay, there's also a window down here for taxes. Okay, we put that down towards the bottom. We don't want them to think we're doing too well. Okay, so let's put in our tax collector here. Give him a little derby. There we go. Okay, so here's our IRS guy. Okay, so that's one of the other windows. The last window actually does go way up at the top. And this is our cost window. And this is the window that we provide to our managers. So that they can make the decisions that they need to know in the business. Okay, the last piece we need to add to this window would be our auditors. We'll give him a tie too. And we need, there's two groups of auditors here, so we'll, we'll add one more. And I apologize, my drawing is not the best. That's supposed to be, believe it or not, that's supposed to be a woman. Sorry, it's a very bad drawing. Anyway, but then the auditors come in and their job is to check and they check all of our bookkeeping processes and they check those financial statements. You can get auditors from the IRS that are checking on your tax stuff. So the auditing profession, they come in and they do checks as well. And this really, this image, is how financial accounting really fits in with the rest of the accounting profession. Okay? So let's take a closer look specifically at this accounting window. Okay? And the job of the accounting window, again, is to give our investors, whether they're debt holders or equity holders, that we typically think of as investors, the people who have given us money, an opportunity to see into our business also gives information to to competitors and stuff but let's draw our window here so we can look at it in more detail and we provide basically four key pieces of information through this window the first is our balance sheet and we put the assets on one side and we put the equity and the liabilities on the other side that's how we paid for all of those assets so they correlate okay and one of these segments is the income statement and that's got a bunch of information and then earnings per share down here. And then we have a statement of cash flows. That's one of our statements. That's an F. And that comes down and that of course has a dollar amount down at the bottom. And the last one is our statement of retained earnings for some companies, but for publicly com traded companies it's actually usually a statement of equity. So we get another one there. Okay, and these are the four key pieces of information that we're going to provide as financial accountants, are these financial statements. Okay, but that's not all the information we provide. We also provide a whole other set of information that explains and, and kind of dresses up this basic information in the financial statements. You can think of those as curtains on our window here. And these 
are our footnotes. Okay? And that's a key piece of our financial statements is to have the footnotes available. So something that you don't want to forget as you're going through the financial information. Okay? Well, let's see here. Uh, and we're going to focus on this in this course of study, we're going to focus on those four key financial statements. And, and again, remember, footnotes are certainly part of the financial statements. Don't forget them. All right, now, this next set is one of our key concepts uh, for this discussion, and I want you to make sure that, that uh, you pay attention. Part of financial accounting is to satisfy three main objectives, and we're going to kind of finish this segment with those three objectives, okay? And the first of those is to provide information that is useful, okay? So you can imagine a normal investor here, our investors wear ball caps, so this investor is confused because he doesn't understand. He's been given a bunch of information. But he doesn't get it. It's all disorganized. Our goal in financial accounting, our objective, is to provide information that is useful. Ooh, his eyes kind of disappeared, didn't they? There we go. Information that is useful. making decisions. So we provide them with the financial statements and then they can make a choice that this is what they want. Okay, That's our first and our primary objective is to make sure that our information is useful Okay, to rational decision makers. Rational means that they're going to make logical decisions. They're also users that have a basic understanding of financial accounting. Not just anybody. My, my grandmother, bless her heart, never did understand what I did as an accountant. She knew well, she loved me anyway, even though she didn't get it. But anyway, um, she didn't understand it, and she wouldn't have been able to understand a set of financial statements. That's not our goal. We want to provide financial information that's relevant to rational decision makers who know a little bit about accounting. Okay? Our second objective is going to be to provide information that helps present and potential investors make decisions about our cash flows. Okay? And also, the timing of those cash flows. When are they going to come through? So we'll use a clock here to represent our timing. Okay. And the other thing that we're trying to figure out is the risk. What is the likelihood that we're going to get the cash that we say we're going to get? Now if you think of that about this objective, to provide information about cash flows and the timing of the cash flows, if you think about that, there's a financial statement. There's two financial statements that actually specifically address that issue. Right? One of them, of course, would be the statement of cash flows. So we have purposely designed that statement of cash flows. Whoops, that's a, that's a C. To provide that information, that, that's going to bug me. Okay, there we go. Okay, So we've got a statement of cash flows that's providing this information about these three. And we've also got our statement of retained earnings because it's showing when we're going to provide information back to our investors. And of course, it could be a statement of stockholders' equity or equity instead. Okay, I have a statement of retained earnings. But those two statements were specifically designed to answer this objective of financial reporting. Right? That's why these are key concepts. It's because they, they provide such an uh, important understanding of the way that accounting works. Okay, the last one that we're going to talk about then, the last major objective of financial reporting, is to provide information about the economic resources of the company and who gets them. So you can imagine, let's see, we have, we might have buildings. That's a very bad building. Oh well. Now you see why I'm an accounting professor, not an art teacher. Okay, we have big double doors over here. Okay, we have buildings, we have inventory all stacked up. Okay, and of course we've got cash. So we're going to provide information about all of these assets. And then we're going to provide information about who gets them. Okay, so we have our our monopoly guy, our in, our uh, debt holder, okay, who has some kind of a loan, and he gets some of those assets. And we've got a stockholder. And he or she gets some of those assets as well. Now again, if you think about that, you can think about, wait a minute, we had two financial statements that specifically dealt with cash flows. We have two financial statements that deal with this as well, right? You have a balance sheet that specifically deals with the assets. 
and the liabilities and equity and show here's our total assets and here's who gets what. But also, we want to understand the effects of transactions and how those change these assets and these claims. Well, that's an income statement. Okay, that provides that information. So these key objectives, not only are they the focus of our financial reporting, but the focus of those four financial statements as well. Isn't that cool? We designed it specifically to be able to provide this information to our investors. We're going to end here. We'll pick up in a new segment and continue on with our discussion of this conceptual framework. All right? I'll see you in a few minutes.